Hi, I'm back. This will be the second episode in the Read Me series, which is very ironic because I'm going to start with the second chapter of my story called Real Life. So if you didn't watch last week, last week I read the prologue and chapter one. And this is kind of one of those stories that kind of starts off slow. <clears throat> and basically all that's happened is this group of friends is going to London for a singing competition. Kind of like the X Factor. <laughs> and um, their other friend is coming along and she's going to like film them and everything like that. Blah, blah, blah. So this one character, the main character, Harley, who is based off of me, and like I said in the last video, all of the characters, most of the characters, are based off of my friends in real life at the time that I wrote this. Um, but the main character, Harley, she's really nervous, and it's kind of unclear why. <clears throat> okay. So, chapter two. Home sweet where? Woo! Sang the crowd as Harley started to come to the front of the stage for her solo. The other four girls, Katrina, Carrie, Ashley, and June, all stepped back. They were to sing the backup to enhance the intensity of Harley's solo. Harley had on a one-strapped, knee-length, glittery gold dress with black flats and a headband with a gaudy purple flower on it. Her friends wouldn't expect anything less than Harley's typical, outrageous, colorful, yet tasteful style. <laughs> it was always bold and didn't always match, but she owned it. Harley walked up to the microphone, <clears throat> swooped back her luscious locks that were blonde and curly. She closed her eyes and opened her mouth to begin to sing and... Nothing. She tried again. Nothing. She tried so hard to get that loud, sassy Madonna voice that she yearned to have out, but she just couldn't. Why can I not sing? Harley thought to herself. Harley turned around to her friends in hopes that they could save her. She opened her mouth to speak, but nothing came out. Harley continuously tried to talk, even to, to talk, but she couldn't get anything out. Harley started feeling her mouth. Harley started feeling her mouth, hoping that her friends would understand. But that's when Harley felt something weird on her lips. Like there weren't any. Your lips are sewn shut, Ashley screamed. Harley continued to feel her mouth, or at least what used to be her mouth. Harley, your mouth is sewn shut. Ashley screamed again. The crowd seemed to get quieter and quieter, and Harley felt like the whole room was closing in on her. Harley, stop! Carrie exclaimed. Her friends could scream all they wanted, but Harley could not hear them. She could only see that their mouths were moving. Harley felt her ears. They were swiftly shutting on her. Harley's friend Marcy tried to run up on the side of the stage to help Harley. Right then, Marcy got to the top step, and boom, an invisible barrier popped up, almost like a glass wall. The other four girls then tried, but another barrier popped up. All the girls kept trying to break down the barrier, or break through at least, screaming Harley's name. Harley tried to run to her friends, but her feet were stuck to the stage. Help, Harley thought, yet the word still would not come out. Suddenly, the walls turned into mirrors. Harley could finally see herself. From what she could tell, she looked gorgeous. But the more she looked, the less she looked like herself. What was Harley seeing? The image in the mirror was like a freshly bloomed sunflower that within minutes rotted and died. The more she stared, the more her eyes burned, like an enemy had thrown chlorine in her eyes. The only sound in Harley's ears were the raving boos from the crowd. Suddenly, there was a man on stage. He held up a camera and said, Smile for the camera, sweetheart. You're going to make the headlines and make me lots of money. He chuckled cruelly. Ha ha ha. 
ears shut, mouth sewn tight, and eyes burning. How is this even possible? Everywhere she went, Harley saw another magazine with her picture on it. Her hands were covering her face and the caption said, Failure to launch? How did this happen? Every time Harley would walk out the door, she would be swarmed with cameras in her face. Harley, Harley, over here, this way, how does this make you feel? Why couldn't you sing that night? Harley, 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 wake up. We're here. Harley jolted up out of her seat with a dramatic inhale. <gasps> Harley was glad to see her friends' faces. Where? Wait, I can talk. Why couldn't you be able to talk? June asked with a chuckle. And we're here, in London. It was only a dream, Harley said, relieved to herself. The girls unloaded from the plane as they discussed their lunch plan. What time is it? asked Harley. Like... Um, let me check, Marcy said as she pulled out her phone. It's 10.30, Katrina said perkily. Overachiever, Marcy mumbled to herself. Yeah, so what time do we have to register, Carrie questioned. Registration starts at noon, so we have just enough time to eat lunch, Harley said informatively. What do y'all want for lunch, Ashley asked. I don't care, let's just get out of this crazy airport first, June said with a chuckle. Moment in time. Can you pass me the cheese dip? Katrina asked June. Sure thing, June cheerfully replied. So, are you guys excited? Marcy asked as she got out her small camcorder. I don't know if I feel completely comfortable here yet, Harley made clear. Well, we are all nervous, Carrie said plainly. It's not just that, though. I mean... We are six teenage girls, technically supposed to still be in high school, here in London, by ourselves, without any adult supervision? Harley said frantically. Yeah, but not for long, June said, trying to be comforting. I mean, registration is in an hour, and tomorrow we start boot camp, and we'll be staying at the same hotel as the other contestants as of tonight. Yeah, I reckon you're right. Harley paused again. So, on a rate 1 to 10, how nervous are y'all? I think it's still pretty surreal to be walking in all the places that the people we look up to most walked. One Direction and Little Mix, of course. It's crazy that just a year ago we were consumed with thoughts about how awesome they are and how their dreams came true. And now we're here, Carrie exclaimed passionately. I feel like if Harley were to respond to that, she would say, hashtag classic. Ma Marcy said, shaking the camera because of her laughter. Well, I guess we shall find out, Katrina said, confidently. Moment in time. The girls walked into regis the registration building to see a mass crowd of people swarming all over the place, like bees in a hive. Wow, it's pretty crowded, Carrie commented. Don't worry, this is nothing. I got this, just follow me, Harley said as she led her friends through the crowd. There should be a booth or something for contestants who auditioned online. Is that it over there? Marcy asked as she turned her whole body, including her camera, to the side of the conference room. Yeah, let's go, Harley said as she once again led the way. Harley walked up to a swanky, stylish-looking young man in about his early 20s. He had slick back brown hair and a nifty plaid bow tie. He and Ashley immediately met eyes. Yes, hi, we auditioned online and we need our paperwork and hotel keys and such. Yes, ma'am, are you all solo artists or a group? We are a group. Um, Harley looked at his name tag, Steve. Harley gave Steve a friendly smile. Okay, name? Oh, well, I'm Harley and this is... No, no, Steve laughed. I meant the group name. Oh, duh, it's Exo Sally. Did you come up with that? Steve asked. Good question. We were making covers of songs and putting them on YouTube and we were really... We really needed a group name. We didn't have anything better, so I suggested Exo Sally and it just kind of stuck. Wow, that's a really interesting backstory. So, Exo Sally have been, has been a group for a while now. 
Steve asked as he gathered the paperwork. Only about a year, but we have all been best friends for, gosh, all of high school at least. Oh. Steve handed Harley the paperwork. What do you mean, oh? Here's your room key. The room number is on the back. Have a nice day, Steve said as he handed Harley several hotel keys and looked around her for the next person in line. Wait, what? Why do you say it like that? Harley asked again. Well, it's just that the best groups become friends. They're not already friends. Most of those groups don't last, Steve said right away. Why do you say that? Steve motioned his eyes behind Harley. Harley turned around to see that her friends weren't there anymore. Were they? Exactly, Steve said precisely. What are you talking about? Look, the thing is... Because you have a pre-existing friendship with these girls, it will be harder for you and them to work together. In other words, if you and one of the other girls get into a disagreement or argument, it tends to get more personal, which then makes it harder to ignore and move on. What if you can't make up? But what if you can, Harley challenged. Then great. But if you can't, then that will make things awkward for you and everybody else who even speaks to the band. Before you know it, the whole world will know. You'd be lucky if it just got if just the country found out, Steve said, getting in Harley's face, and you have no control over how you are portrayed to the public. That is why a lot of poppy bands break up. Go up overnight and go down just as fast. Harley hesitated. Well, I think you're wrong. I think we're different. That's what they all say. Look, pal, you are ranting about a massive stereotype here, okay? Most bands, pop or not, were already friends. Not everyone gets the privilege to be put together with four strangers and get a record deal right there. Yeesh, have a little faith. Isn't that your job, to encourage people not crush their dreams? Harley exasperated. But is this really your dream? Steve said as he glared Harley dead in the eyes. All I'm going to say is when I see Exo Sally, which is, by the way, the dumbest name I've ever heard, I see six best friends that in a few months will have a hard time even looking at each other. Some of you, I don't see it. It's not in your eyes. You don't want it, Steve snarled at Harley. Harley paused for a second, then simply said, You're wrong and walked away. Moment in time. Ah, good to be settling into our rooms at last, Carrie said as she slipped into her PJs. Yeah, especially knowing at any moment that you'll have to pack your bags back up and leave, Harley said. Wow, look who's a negative Nelly now, Carrie said. Why do you guys leave me today anyways? Harley asked. I mean, we didn't really leave you, but you said you had it under control. Yeah, the crowd, not Steve. Who's Steve? Everyone questioned. Nobody. Harley began thinking and mumbling to herself. Left me alone, solo. Pfft, like I was a solo act. What was that? Nothing. I just... Something I heard Steve say. Harley muttered as she slowly fell asleep. Dun. Cool. So, next week, I will read chapter three. I hope that it's getting better. I hope that y'all are following the story, and I hope that you like it, because I love it. I loved writing it. I'm still working on it, actually. And uh, I love writing, and this is probably one of my most favorite mini-series that I'm doing, so I just want to share. So, if you like it, if you have any comments, suggestions, concerns, etc., etc., then comment down below. Don't forget to follow me on social media, and don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any stories that you would like to share, I challenge you. Good. Okay, <clears throat> that was crazy. The fire alarm went off right as I was ending the video, and 
that was a waste of time and it was very loud. I think I can't hear anymore. But anyways, as I was saying, follow, subscribe, and let me know what you think. And I hope you have a great day. Bye.